Hi, and welcome to a tutorial on how to upload your template for your waterfall card here in Cricut Design Space. Now, I currently already have the file, but I will show you how to upload it. So in Cricut Design Space, you're going to go to the main page, the upload page, and you're going to click Upload Image. From there, it's going to take you to the next page where you can drag and drop your file or you can click Browse. From Browse, it's going to take me to the contents that are on my laptop. And so I'm going to make sure I'm in Downloads and I'm going to click type in the file that I'm looking for. And I'm looking for the waterfall. Now, as it's an SVG file, there is no option to print and cut. SVG files only upload as cut files. So now once it's up and I can see it, prepare to load, I'm going to click at the bottom right hand and upload the file. And as you can see now, it's on my upload page. So I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to go to the bottom right and add it to my canvas. Now the file uploads as one unit. It's grouped together. The reason why I've done that is in case you want to make your card bigger or smaller, you keep everything grouped together so that way there's nothing that's off-sized. By keeping it together and enlarging it or resizing it, making it bigger or smaller, as a group, you won't have any miscalculations when it comes to assembly. So now for the sake of the video, I'm going to keep everything as is, and I'm going to go to the top right here where these icons are, and I'm going to ungroup it. So now everything is independent of itself. I'll explain to you what the pieces are. So the main piece here on the left hand side is actually the card base. As you can see, it's very long because this is a flip card, meaning that when you fold the card in the middle, you're going to open the card from top to bottom. It's going to flip up. This long piece here with the little notch at the bottom is the actual mechanism that you assemble the parts to create the water card onto. These square panels here are the bases that connect to the panel. The white one is where you would do your print and cut or you would stamp or you would um, write whatever you want on there. This is the base that will actually connect to the mechanism itself. The white parts overlap onto that. This long rectangular part here is basically what we call like the belt. This is what ties the waterfall mechanism to the actual base of the card. It's not glued down. You'd be using brads to connect it. I will show you all that in the next video when I do the assembling. The two pieces here are the mats for the card. And as you can see, one is slightly bigger than the other. So you have two mats. I want to make sure that I show you where the mats go. So you would overlap them. So this mat, the card base, first of all, let me explain, is a sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock cut in half at the side that would be eight and a half inches long. That's the reason why it flips up. You can take the same eight and a half by 11 cardstock and cut it on the side that's 11 inches and you would get the standard card where you open it from right to left. They would be exactly the same size. It's just they would be going in different directions. So to make it very simple, you would take an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock and you would just cut it in half either on the eight and a half side or the 11 inch side. Doesn't matter because once it's folded, it's all the same size. So here you have the two mats that decorate the actual front of the card. So like I said, this one is four by five and a quarter. This one here is 3.869 by 5119. And they overlap. So it's a very subtle size difference, but that's basically how the card would be once you have everything aligned properly. Um, let me just show you, make it easier. So I'm going to take this over here, take this over here. One way to make sure everything is uniform, you highlight both, go to align, and hit center. Now they're perfect. I'm going to highlight both, drag them over here. There you go. Now what you can also do is you can duplicate the red one and cut it out in a white piece of cardstock and that piece can go on the inside of your card so you can write your salutations, your greetings, your thank you, whatever it is that you want to write. So you would duplicate the one that's 4 by 5.25 
and that second piece would go inside, preferably anything that's of a light color, so very pale yellow or beige or white, and that's where you'd write your, your thank yous, your happy birthday or whatever, and that second piece would go inside. Now I'm going to show you a very important part. Um, first of all, as I said, these bases that match the color of the cardstock for the actual mechanism are the parts that would be adhered to the mechanism itself. And then these white parts would go on top with your decoration, your stamp, your print, um, print and cut design, whatever it is. But the main thing is that right now, the mechanism itself, with these solid lines, the maker or the explorer machine, whatever machine you're using in regards to Cricut Design Space, would actually be cutting all these pieces into separate sections because it's reading this as a basic cut. We need to change all these four lines into score lines. And to do that, you highlight the piece you want to work on. It's going to show you on the right hand side what you're working on. From there, you unclick it because you don't want that to be the thing that you're working on. You want to work on the lines that you cannot see. So if I click on that one, it highlights that one. To make sure that I'm highlighting all of them, I'm going to hold my shift button and click on the next three. I'm going to go to my top left where it says operation and change my basic cut to score. And now you can see the lines look like dashes. These will be your score lines and you're going to use your scoring tool in your machine. Now right now they're not attached to the base. You want to highlight the base along with the four dashes and on the bottom right you're going to see it's going to say attach click it I'm going to move that piece over because I'm going to do the same thing on the base of my card I'm going to highlight you're going to see on the right hand side it highlighted the whole base but I just want to work with that that cut line go to the top where it says operations and change that to a score line and then I'm going to highlight both and click attach now the pieces will not be cut in half. My machine will now score in the middle and score these four pieces. Make sure you save your information in case we know Cricut Design Space will glitch at times. You just save it. So you can type in whatever it is that you want to call it. I'm just going to keep it as the waterfall card template. And because I have other copies, I just want to make sure I know I did this in June. I'm going to save it. From there, you'll click Make It. Once everything is saved, click Make It and get all your pieces. And I will now make another video in regards to how to assemble the pieces. So take your time, play around with it. Um, if you do want to make other mats, other size mats, go ahead and do so. I'll just show you very quickly how to handle that. So remember, this red one is the bigger one. That's the primary mat. I'm going to bring that forward. This second mat is the one that goes over that mat. So this is the one that you're going to, to make a smaller size if you want to have multiples. My suggestion is don't have too many because then your card is going to be front heavy and it'll fall over. It won't be able to stand up. But in order to make another smaller mat, Yes, you can just go over to the size, uh, the shape button and create another rectangle, but there's an easier way now that Cricut has the offset button. For those of you who don't know, an offset is when it takes the shape and makes another shape on the outside. And currently, it always has the corners curved. I need the corners to be straight for my rectangle. And as you can see here, the blue lines, this is an offset when the size is bigger than the actual object that you want to use. To make an inset, inset, I need to make sure that the rectangle, this blue line, is on the inside of my image. And so I'm going to move everything over to the left-hand side. And as you can see, the rectangle is now inside my main um, object. So I'm going to hit Apply. And there you have it. I'll change it to a different color. Just change it to yellow for now. And there you go. So offset, if I did an offset of it, the rectangle would be bigger than the one, the original one, but by doing an inset, I-N-S-E-T, inset, you get the shape to be on the inside of your main object. So even though it says offset, it's showing you the imaging. So like I said, if 
from here. Let's see. A slight glitch. I'm going to go to make it. If ever you get that black screen, just go to make it and then cancel. There you go. So again, an offset is when you're going to get another image that's bigger than your original one. An inset is on the inside of your image. So therefore, when I click, when I create my inset, I now have an extra layer. Okay, so that's basically it. So I will create the video of me assembling the waterfall template. But for now, play around, get familiarized with it, get everything cut up, and um, I'll catch you in the next video.